New York and the Walmart collector cons kick off. The Hasbro HasLab continues to bleed backers. McFarlane Toys steals the show and a whole lot more. So let's jump right into it. Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here and welcome to a Friday edition of TNI News. And as always, we've got a lot to cover today. And let's start off with everyone's favorite topic, the Marvel Legends HasLab Ghostwriter campaign. So uh, yesterday I uh, kicked off New York Comic Con and, and Hasbro did have the car as well as all three figures, the Ghost Rider and the two stretch goal figures, the Mephisto, which needs 12,000 backers and the Goblin Queen, which only needs 10,000 backers. Uh, they had all three of those figures on display at New York Comic Con for folks to see in person. The car showing off all of its light up effects and everything. And then again, the, the three figures. So, of course, for those not attending the convention, we do have high-res images for that up on Marvelous News, which I'm sharing with you here now. Thanks to Russell for providing these to us. Um, but despite having it on display, despite announcing officially the Goblin Queen and Mephisto, you know, none of that has really seemed to have an effect or a positive effect, I should say, on this campaign as it continues to bleed backers. So as I'm filming this video today... It is currently sitting at an all-time low of 5,259 backers. So uh, I believe this is the lowest, you know, not including when it was moving upward, but since ever since it's been moving downward since September 23rd, this is the lowest the campaign has, has been. And I suspect there's a very good chance that this thing will move under 5,000 backers by the end of the weekend. So um, at this point, I, I believe Hasbro has indicated, um, I won't say this 100%, but it seems like they're strongly suggesting these are the only two stretch goals, the Mephisto and the Goblin Queen that would be included. Now, maybe originally they had more and have since decided not to you know, do anything more since it's probably not going to really have a positive effect. Uh, I think, you know, large part of the problem here is the perception is that you know even if people want the stretch goals and feel like that's enough to warrant getting it they don't feel like the stretch goals there's any chance of the stretch goals being attained and unlocked in this campaign so the car itself is just not done it enough for enough people and so and, and the initial Ghost Rider figure so um you know, again, this campaign is, even though it, it still has until the end of October 31st, you know, it still has time, but everything suggests that this campaign is not going to be successful and, and likely will will join the likes of the Rancor, the Reva Lightsaber, and, and the Cookie Monster in the failed HasLab category. In other Marvel Legend news, that classic comic Star-Lord figure, which is a Walmart exclusive, went up for pre-order on the Walmart website yesterday for the first day of Walmart's CollectorCon event. As I'm filming this, that figure is still currently available for purchase. The cost of it's about $25. And again, it is based on essentially uh, Star-Lord's original appearance in the comic books. Switching over to Transformers, so again yesterday for the Walmart Collector Con event, uh, those Velocity figures, the second round of Velocity figures, which are Walmart exclusives, went up for pre-order. And on top of that, we also got two uh, new uh, movie figure reveals. I won't necessarily say new, but, but they come in unique kind of packaging. Again, these are based on the original animated movie. And the two figures they're offering are Hot Rod and Starscream, which were also available on Pulse. I'm not sure if they're still available there or not, but um, uh, these were kind of a little bit of a surprise. I, I, I don't think we knew these were coming um, on top of the Velocity figures that also went up yesterday for, for the Walmart Collector Con event. Now on the Star Wars front, those Star Wars figures I told you previously about, the Black Series Andor figures and the Clone uh, uh, Vintage Collection figure all went up for pre-order yesterday. I believe those are all still available. Also, the Halloween Wookiee figure did go up yesterday on Walmart's website. And then uh, on the Target side for the Halloween figures, the Clone Trooper figure also went up for pre-order. And as I'm recording this, that is available for pre-order now. Those uh, have a cost of about uh, $25, $26. Now, while we're on the subject of the Walmart Collector Con, other items that went up yesterday. So for NECA, those Auto T Mirage comic repaints that I told you about went up for pre-order. Each one of those costs $40 each. 
they were fairly simple to buy. You didn't have to jump through hoops and go to a special website or anything. Uh, they did sell out fairly quickly, and NECA did say more would be available today for the second day of the Walmart Collector Con. As I'm filming this, apparently there was some type of delay, technical difficulties, according to NECA. So they had not gone up for today, uh, but those should become available again at some point on the Walmart website. October 15th is when they're supposed to be made available in stores. Again, the price on those are $40 each. The G.I. Joe classified figures, the Crimson Guard and the Commando Snake Eyes did go up for pre-order yesterday. I thought they would, but... But since Hasbro had been kind of quiet about them, I, I was kind of wondering a bit. But they did go up yesterday on both Walmart and Pulse. They sold out on Pulse. Though keep in mind with Pulse, which is where I would recommend you buy these, not Walmart. Because Walmart is likely going to ship them in envelopes and you're going to get them all bent up. In fact, uh, I got my, uh, yesterday I got my uh, lizard figure from Walmart. It came in an envelope. It's got a big crease here on the card back. Um, now I plan on opening this figure, so it's not a big deal, but like with those G.I. Joe retro figures, I feel like a lot of collectors are going to want to keep them on the card backs, and Walmart is not the best option for that. So even though right now Hasbro Pulse has sold out of the Crimson Guard and Commando Snake Eyes, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they don't restock those. They have restocked the other ones, um, but they are still available on the Walmart website if you want to get them there and roll the dice and and hope that they end up uh, coming in good condition. But again, based on Walmart's track record, that is probably not very likely. On the Mattel side of things, we got some new WWE figures that went up for pre-order. So the Ruthless Aggression Wave 3 figures went up, which included the NWO Kevin Nash, the John Cena and Shelton Benjamin figures. Now, as I'm filming this, the only one of those that sold out was the Kevin Nash figure. That one definitely seemed to be in fairly high demand, but the other two are still currently available for pre-order on the Walmart website. The WWE Superstars Wave 4 figures also went up for pre-order on the Walmart website and I believe are still available for pre-order. That includes the Mr. T figure, The Rock, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Typhoon. So those are done on the Masters of the Universe Origins type bodies, uh, very similar to the WWE Masters of the Universe mashup line. Again, those are Walmart exclusives. And again, as I'm filming this, they're, all four of those figures are available for purchase. That Masters of the Universe Origins Road Ripper with Mecha Neck figure went up for pre-order on the Walmart website, Ground Ripper, Road Ripper, whatever you want to call it, but it went up for pre-order. Now that is not a Walmart exclusive that was currently listed uh, on Amazon. I told you that the other day. And also, as I've told you, that will be available everywhere and should be available for pre-order everywhere starting on October 12th. Also, that Cosmic Skeletor figure I told you about on Wednesday, the one based on the Netflix animated He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series, went up on Walmart's website. The figure stands 9.5 inches tall, and last time I checked, it was still available for pre-order. Keeping it with Masters of the Universe, I also just wanted to share this very first look at the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Netflix series Deluxe King Hiss figure. This figure is available for pre-order at our sponsor, Entertainment Earth. I don't think he really appeared in the newest season of the cartoon, but was hinted to, and likely we will see it next season, assuming there is another season of the series on Netflix. On the McFarland toy front, unfortunately, the Shazam uh, DC Multiverse figure has not yet come back in stock, at least not that I've seen. However, those black and white Arkham figures, uh, the repaints of the Arkham Build-A-Wave, have gone up for pre-order on Walmart's website. Those are gold label figures. They are Walmart exclusives. Also going up is that, that gold label version of the Batmobile without the outer uh, cover. And then um, finally for McFarlane on the Walmart website, just today went up for pre-order a Batman the Animated Series 4-pack. These appear to be repaints of the original DC collectible ones um, with uh, added uh, cell shading. So um, I, I don't know how you feel about cell shading or if you missed out on these figures originally, but that four pack is available and it includes Batman, Harley Bullock, Joker, and Harley Quinn. Okay, now while we're on the subject of McFarlane, let's stick with that and let's talk about the reveals this weekend at New York Comic Con. So in my opinion, uh, McFarlane Toys has kind of stolen the show with the best reveals of the weekend. 
and they started out on uh, Wednesday night with a pre-party event where they showed off some new figures. We got our first looks at the DC Multiverse a Mongol mega figure, as well as the DC Comics version of Frankenstein. So um, a big thanks to uh, uh, Rob D. Toys for providing us these images. Again, these were on display at a, a special New York Comic Con pre-party. Also on display for you 66 uh, retro Batman fans, we got our first look at the Two-Face figure and King Tut. So both of those are coming to the line. And for those of you who are not familiar, while Two-Face never appeared in the original TV series, he has more recently in recent uh, years appeared in an animated 66 Batman movie that was voiced by William Shatner. And there was also a comic book series put out by DC Comics based on the retro, uh, you know, that classic 66 Batman series. So I believe the figure is technically based on the comic book series, not the movie. But, you know, you might get a little bit of William Shatner likeness in there. I don't know. But King Tut is definitely cool. And then uh, yesterday, during the first day of New York Comic Con, McFarlane had its first ever toy panel, and they revealed uh, quite a few things there. So first of all, for the 66 Batman series, uh, some other figures like black and white figures and stuff they showed off. But uh, the, the next really cool reveal on that front is an Egghead figure. So, you know, played by originally by Vincent Price, Egghead is coming to the line, which is cool. So I was definitely pretty excited about those uh, 66 Batman reveals. Now, on top of that, they announced the return of Movie Maniacs, which are said to be six-inch figures or statues. They look more like statues. These are going to be based on Warner Brother movie properties. Uh, so it looks like this is basically something they're doing uh, with Warner Brothers, who, of course, they have the license for the DC stuff. Um, so they showed off uh, uh, a Bugs Bunny uh, in a Superman outfit, the Wicked Witch from the West, Harry Potter, and and uh, a Ted Lasso. So those don't appear to have really any articulation from what I can tell. They're said to be six inches, uh, but I think yeah, we consider these more statues than figures. For 7-inch DC Multiverse, we are going to be getting some Chris Nolan Batman Trilogy figures, it looks like. So the figures they showed in the slide presentation were Scarecrow, Batman, Joker, Two-Face, and Bane. Now they list this as a Build-A-Wave. I think maybe Bane is the Build-A-Figure. I won't swear to it 100%, but um, I believe that is going to be the Build-A-Figure. In this wave is the Bane figure. And then besides the Mongol and the Frankenstein figures that we got looks at the night before, they also announced additional DC Multiverse figures, uh, again with a slide. So we've seen, uh, I believe, all of these rumored previously, but the coolest here is the Mr. Freeze, which has a freeze gun. We also see Superboy and Eradicator from the Return of Superman storyline. We've got a new Catwoman figure in there, uh, um, several Batman variants, and another Joker figure. So uh, Mr. Freeze, the Superboy, and the Eradicator figure to me are the coolest reveals there. For uh, DC Page Punchers, so first of all, with the 3-inch line, they announced uh, Batman Beyond, uh, Batman, uh, Aquaman, and Lex Luthor in armor. So those, again, are figures that we've seen listings for. And then for the 7-inch DC Page Punchers, we're going to get a wave of Aquaman figures, uh, like with the previous you know, Flash wave that we saw. Uh, this is going to be based on these uh, figures are based on the appearances of these characters as they appear in the comic book that will be included with each of the figures. And then DC will no longer be the only uh, brand getting the page puncher treatment. It was announced uh, during the panel that Spawn will also see three inch page puncher figures. So the three inch Spawn figures each will come with its own comic book. Uh, so look for those. And then for regular Spawn figures, we got a couple of new reveals as well. So they showed off a new medieval Spawn, Sin, and then as a mega figure, the character Monolith. Now, I don't know with that medieval Spawn, you know, a while back, McFarlane had teased a Kickstarter where they were supposed to be doing medieval Spawn. They even, I, I believe the last time they mentioned that was in July around San Diego Comic-Con time. So... I, I don't know if that got scrapped um, and now they're just going to do a regular release of Medieval Spawn or what the deal is, but uh, I guess, you know, time will tell. But being they've been pretty mum on the whole Kickstarter thing, um, I'm wondering if they didn't just uh, kind of scrap that whole idea. 
And then finally, we got a couple of new uh, five inch DC superpowers uh, reveals as well. So the next wave of figures, which uh, we knew were coming, Nightwing, Wonder Woman and Deathstroke. And then we are going to continue to get vehicles in this line. So the Batmobile and Wonder Woman's invisible jet are coming as well. And the uh, Batmobile is going to cost 30 bucks and the invisible jet is going to cost $20. Now, NECA Toys was also on hand uh, at New York Comic Con, so they really didn't have a whole lot in the way of new product reveals that we hadn't already seen at places like San Diego and PowerCon. For, like, Gargoyles, maybe the first time we're seeing the baby Goliath, though I think maybe they showed a slide of that figure at PowerCon, I'm not entirely sure, but we're getting an updated look at that, as well as other Gargoyles figures that, that they have coming. But again, I believe we had seen all of these previously at, at, at places like San Diego Comic Con. Same thing with like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now there were a couple of new figures that we hadn't seen before, including uh, uh, the armored Usagi Ujumbo figure. I believe this is the first time we are seeing that. It looks like we are getting the other members of the Purple Dragons gang. So, you know, we got one of the members uh, in the Loot Crate offerings, uh, which has started to ship out to people now. But um, looks like we're going to get the rest of those guys. So, um, but everything else I feel like we had seen at other conventions like San Diego and PowerCon and such. So um, now it's possible NECA might continue to put new stuff out throughout the weekend. I'm not entirely sure. You know, they had other products on hand and such, but again, pretty much everything that we had seen um, already at other conventions. And surprisingly, like nothing on uh, really as far as details on the sewer layer or like, you know, we were supposed to get like predator prey reveals i think back during san diego which never happened and still doesn't look like we're seeing those uh going up for pre-order at places like our sponsors big bad toy store and entertainment earth is that universal monsters uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles mashup figure of donatello is the invisible man so that one is now available for pre-order but as I say, as far as new reveals go, so far, I really have not seen a whole lot in the way of new items. Diamond Select Toys was also on hand, but again, I'm, I'm, I haven't been seeing a lot in the way of new reveals. I believe we are seeing for the first time some additional select Invincible figures, primarily uh, the ones that we had not seen uh, to date, I believe is the Monster Girl set. The others we saw at San Diego Comic-Con. But if you're into, you know, the Amazon, these are based on the Amazon animated series more than the comic, I believe. Um, so if you're into that, uh, these are ones that you'll probably want to check out. Super 7, also on hand at, at New York Comic Con. So they actually had some new reveals for us. Uh, I wasn't really expecting a lot in the way of new reveals, but they did have a few things. So we got a look at the second wave of Silverhawks unpainted prototypes for those as well as several new Thundercat Ultimates figures, including Snarf. So Snarf is coming. Uh, the details exactly on how Snarf is being released, if, whether this is a single release, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but but he was on hand. Retaro is coming, as well as uh, Willa. So those three uh, new Thundercat figures were on display. We're getting updated looks at the G.I. Joe Ultimates and the packaging and Power Rangers and things like that. But for new reveals, it was primarily Silverhawks and a few new Thundercat Ultimates figures. Okay, so that's it for today. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about down in the comment section below. Like this video if you're so inclined, and please think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. As always, guys, stay safe out there. Have a great weekend, and until next time, I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification to alert it every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great.